Hi folks, Photo Fisher here. So you bought a Fender GT40 and you're underwhelmed. Well, you're not alone. I'm gonna give you straight up 20 tips on how to make your Fender GT series amp sound its best. I'm gonna tell you what the manual doesn't. I'm gonna use this GT40 right here since it's the model that receives the most grief about sounding bad. But really all of my tips will apply to any Fender GT series amp. So let's get started by reviewing the amp's strengths and downsides. First, its strengths. For starters, the price is right. You can get this unit for about $280 US. Take about $100 bucks off if you want to buy it used online. The unit has a very small footprint and it weighs only about 14 pounds. 15 inches across, about 10 inches deep, and about 11 inches high. The unit is full featured. And by that I mean Fender could have limited the features on this little guy, but they didn't. It has the same features as the Big Brothers, the GT100, and the GT200. The unit is really future-proof. As long as Fender provides updates and patches, it will always be up to date. Another great feature is the Fender Tone app. It's simple and fast to choose presets and modify them with the app versus going on board. And you can access ToneCloud to download other user preset builds as well. One of the most significant features of this amp is having Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. As of the making of this video, there is no other amp on the market that has both of these connectivity points. Another great feature is Fender Tone Cloud. It's easy to access the Tone Cloud and download them for yourself. It's very apparent through this amp that Fender does Fender well. This amp can model, for example, this 72 Deluxe Reverb quite closely. We'll show an example later. And even this clone of a uh, Blues Junior amp uh, can be replicated very closely by this Fender GT40. The sound box is quite solid. It's made of 5 8 inch material. Fender could have skimped on this and gone down to maybe even a half inch for the cabinet, but it doesn't hum, rattle, it doesn't make any noise when, uh, when you crank this thing up. So it's quite solid build. Here's a quick tip to access the tuner without having to go through the menu system. Just press and hold the tap button and the tuner appears. Finally, the Fender GT40 makes a great acoustic amp. So, there are the strengths. There are a few downsides, let's cover those as well. One of the obvious downsides of this amp is the lack of a rotary mid-tone dial. On the GT100 and the 200 series, there is such a dial, but on the smaller frame and footprint of the GT40, there isn't. So how do you get around that? Well, there's a shortcut that I can show you. Press down the third button in this row, and you can rotate the treble dial, and if you can see, my mid-tones are being affected. Another downside is the 60-second looper that's built into the software of this amp is only accessible by buying an optional MGT4 foot switch. You might as well figure on another I'll say $90 to $100 for that. The global sound settings are rather bland and ho-hum. It'd be better to include in like a 5 or a 7 band EQ that you can apply across all of your presets. The amp has a rather short power cable in my opinion. So for about 10 bucks you can buy a 20 foot universal power cable online and solve that problem. I do think that the pedal, the optional pedal switch, has a sufficiently long power cable. It's about 12 feet long. While I'm impressed with the sound that the 6.5 inch full range speakers provide, I'd rather see one 8 inch full range speaker like the LT25, which is a newer amp that Fender has just come out with. I have found that the amp, cabinet, and effects lack good documentation. Outside of going through each preset to hear how they sound for yourself, there's really not much to guide you. So I've documented every amp, cabinet, and effect and how they're used for each preset in this spreadsheet. 
The download link is provided in the description area for this video. I'll cover more on how to use the spreadsheet later in this video. That persistent flashing tap button. Why? Currently, there's no way to stop it from flashing. So, yep, you guessed it. Black electrical tape to the rescue. There, solved. And the most recognizable downside of this amp is its boxy sound. You need to tweak it to get the most out of it. So let's get on with my 20 tips on how to get the most out of this little amp. Tip number one, please understand that it is a practice amp. How can you tell? It has only one line in jack for one instrument. That'd be your instrument, no one else's. It has no line out or effect send return outputs on the back. It's low wattage for a digital modeling amp at 20 watts per side. And it has personal sized speakers. The back is fully enclosed and ported to get that extra low end sound out of such small speakers. The GT100 and 200 have an open back and larger Celestian 12 inch drivers. So understanding that it is a practice amp helps set expectations, but we certainly can tweak it to get some impressive sounds out of this little box. I think this is where other online reviews might lead someone astray. They review it with expectations of it being a stage amp, and it really isn't. Tip number two, ensure the latest firmware updates are installed. You'll get the latest amps, cabinets, and effects, and not to mention updates on Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection patches. There's plenty on Fender's support website on how to update your amp. I found it helpful to review Fender's tone tips online or in the Fender Tone app. If you want to do a fast track of your learning curve, do a quick read of these. It'll help you understand the sound basics of amp models, effect types, stomp boxes, modulation, delay, reverb effects, and in what order to put them. Tip number four. Understand what types of guitars work best for any given preset. On the GT40, single coil pickups generate buzz and hiss, just like on tube amps. Humbuckers sound cleaner. The same guitar sound characteristics you'd expect using big stacks and tube amps are really recreated faithfully in the GT series. I have found a preset created for my Telecaster. It sounds quite different when I use the same preset for my Strat or my F-hole. Ideally, you'd want to create a custom preset for each guitar in your axe arsenal. Tip number five. Learn how existing presets are built. I believe the key to understanding the GT40 sound is to understand how the provided presets are really built. Digging into one of your favorite presets will actually unlock secrets on getting the best sound possible. Tip number six. Mess with global EQ settings to match your guitar. Global EQ settings are really a quick and easy way to change the sound profile of GT40 across the board. There are currently eight settings. Each of these will create a different sound result. It pays to experiment with these, and it's pretty quick to do so. Tip number seven. Adjust a preset's basic tone settings to minimize that boxy sound. Get into the basic sound settings of each preset and tweak them in this order. First, bring presence up just a tad. Number two, adjust treble until it shrills and then back off just a little bit. And then number three, reduce mid back a tad until it sounds right to your ear. Tip number eight, adjust an amp's sound brightness, presence, or body level. Adjusting these can make a huge difference in how the GT40 sounds. On a preset, dig into an amp's settings to find these controls. Tip number nine, Mess around with the various cabinet options for any given amp. Some cabinets yield a soft muted tone profile, while others are quite full and robust. Get under the hood and mess around with the cabinet and you'll notice a huge sound advantage in doing so. Tip number 10. Add an equalizer stomp box to every one of your favorite presets. Another quick way to tweak the sound profile of the amp and your particular guitar is to simply add a multiband equalizer as a pre-setting before the amp model. Tip number 11. Limit the use of deep, dark reverb and delay settings. The GT40 isn't a friend to deep, dark reverb settings due to that small 6.5 inch driver within. 
Multiple layered delays and deep, thick reverbs amplify that boxy mid-range tone sound. Unless, of course, you have a specific need to generate this type of sound profile, it's best to avoid the biggest sound weakness, in my opinion. Tip number 12. Use the Fender Tone app to preview downloads and tone changes. The Fender Tone app makes tweaking presets easy, and quickly in real time, too. While you don't need to use the Fender Tone app to adjust settings in any preset, it sure makes it visually easier using the ubiquitous touch platforms of an iPad or an iPhone or an Android device. Any adjustments made to an app, a cabinet, or a stomp box effect can be heard real time. Tip number 13. Play with the positions of stomp box effects in the signal path. Moving your stomp boxes before or after your selected amp can make a huge difference in sound. Take fuzz for example. Using the big fuzz stomp box pedal before an amp brightens the tone and gives the fuzzy distortion more rounded, full-bodied tone. Placing the big fuzz stomp box after the amp dampens the sound dramatically. To the untrained, this would probably make the GT40 amp appear to be a crappy sounding box. Tip number 14. Adjust the amp's built-in noise gate to limit gain hiss. If you play with single coil pickups, it's a necessity to dig under the hood on any preset's amp model to tweak the built-in noise gate function. Even with humbuckers, tweaking the noise gate setting will clean up the sound. Tip number 15. Adjust a modeled amp's bias and sag to fine-tune the tone. This is really getting under the hood of each amp and can make a noticeable difference when you use classic tube amp models. The purpose of bias is to find the optimum flow of current to a tube. High bias is running the tubes hot which reduces the tube's life. But in the case of a solid state modeling amp like the Fender GT40, we don't care. Low bias creates some distortion and sometimes it can be unpleasant sounding. So low bias gives you cleaner, crisp sounds. High bias gives warm sounds with headroom cap giving more distortion. It can increase those mid-tones on the GT40 undesirably, by the way. Sag is the holy grail of tube amp sound and why tube amps sound different than solid state amps. The amp produces more of a compressed, spongy, crunchy sound the more sag is increased. Reducing sag takes away the crunch and compression. So in summary, less sag limits compression and gives a more responsive, bright, intense attack sound. More sag increases compression with less volume, and it sounds more muddy and spongy and crunchy. Build a core set of presets for each guitar in your axe arsenal, and build custom presets from there. Once you've become comfortable with managing presets, changing out amps, cabinets, and effects, you can begin to create your own presets. Tip number 17. Leverage the most common amps and effects used by the pros. Create custom presets with the following most often used elements, and you'll follow the design paths of many of the pros and the presets that they create. Tip number 18. Use Tone Cloud with discretion. Tone Cloud is a great way to pick up some pretty sweet presets, but for every preset that is out there, I have found two or three that is just not all that in a bag of chips. So, find a few contributors that have similar playing styles or sounds you like and follow them. You'll learn a lot by how they are built. Tip number 19. Get the amp off the ground and set it near ear level when playing through it. You'll notice an immediate difference in how you'll hear more of the tonal range without really crunching the speaker. The amp seems to shine between 50% and 70% of the master volume. Yet another reason this is a practice amp and really nothing more. Tip number 20. And finally, don't be afraid to use the amp as an acoustic guitar amplifier. I think the amp really shines in projecting acoustic guitar pickups. This is really a welcome surprise by having essentially a dual purpose modeling amp and an acoustic amp at your disposal. You'll have to do some preset overhauling to create a sound profile to match your amplified acoustic pickups. And be sure to avoid those high gain effects and stomp boxes. You'll just create a squeal fest otherwise. Well, there you have it. 20 tips on how to get the most out of your Fender GT40 and make it sound like a million bucks. Once you get the sound adjusted to your liking, I bet you'll find that you'll be practicing more often with the Fender GT40 by your side. Be sure to stay tuned to listen to the sound examples next.
let's walk through how the spreadsheet's laid out. On the far left-hand side in the columns, I have each preset that's included with the Fender GT Series amp. On the top, across the top, here in yellow, I have all the amps, all the cabinets that are available, the dynamics and EQ. Here in blue, I have the stomp box effects. In purple, the modulation effects. In black, we have the filters and pitch. In green, we have delay effects that are listed. And finally, I list all the reverb effects. So let's scroll back and see how this is all used. So let's take a preset, for example, and follow along to see how it's built. Let's use preset number 122, Tremo Killer. The amp that is used in that preset is the 65 Twin Reverb. If we scroll on over, let's see what cabinet is used. It uses the 65 twin cabinet. All right, to build that sound, we have pre and post uh, settings for uh, the stomp box effects. Pre means before it goes into amp simulation. Post means after the amp simulation is completed, the effects are then applied. So in this case, this preset uses simple compressor as a pre. Scrolling on over, it also uses Vibratone and Vintage Tremolo as a pre. Continuing on, it uses Mono Tape Delay also as a pre, Stereo Echo Filter as a pre, and finally Large Hall Reverb as a post stomp box effect. So that builds that entire preset number 122 called Tremo Killer.